Uh, his body was transported from the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center uh, by sheriff's helicopter uh, very close to the L.A. County Coroner's office. Uh, his body was then, and I'm sure we'll see the shot again, removed from the helicopter. Uh, you could see just by looking at it, the size of it, the slightness of it compared to the, uh, uh, the law enforcement and other officials, how tiny, how tiny he was. Uh, he's in a plain white van. Uh, they will be transporting him uh, from what Adam reported to an expedited autopsy. Uh, the, the toxicology results, doctor, will take how long, Dr. They'll Siegel? Take, they'll take about two or three days. The first part will be to look at the physical remains, the organs themselves, and then they will start to look at them under the microscope. The entire autopsy should take just a few days. Some of the toxicology reports will take a little longer. The initial ones, just two or three days. When, when they say cardiac arrhythmia, uh, you know, all, all that really means is, you know, the heart at some point stopped beating. First, is that a cause of death? Well, first it starts to be very irregularly, Geraldo, and actually, if that is the cause of death, it may be somewhat hard to determine in retrospect, because the heart itself may not be that severely damaged. There's some signs they can look for. You know, it may, it may have started to beat irregularly without actually damaging the heart. If the heart itself is damaged badly, that's called a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, that will be determined to be the cause of death. He was sued, remember, not more than six weeks or two months ago by people who had been the closest to him in this last phase of his personal and professional life, including Ramon Bain, who was his spokesperson throughout that 2005 trial. Uh, you know, this is a guy who uh, would look you in the face, you'd think he was your best friend, and not, I don't believe he had a venal bone in his body, uh, but then the next day, uh, he'd be off and he'd trade one manager in for the next, one spokesman in for the next, one producer in for the next, and they all played off against each other and sued each other. Uh, it is, you have to recall, that this guy was a gigantic businessman for all of his indebtedness. Uh, he was still, uh, uh, had a revenue estimated at a half a billion dollars uh, based on his uh, music catalog. Uh, remember, it included many of the Beatle songs. Uh, this is a guy who had, a, had a, an avalanche of cash uh, cascading in, down into his life, uh, but he spent it. I bet that corpse doesn't weigh 140 pounds, 135 pounds. He was a bit taller than I am. I'm 5'10". He weighed probably 40, 50 pounds less than I do. I weigh 167. You know, I bet he was 130, one, even less. Uh, it seems so uh, Ill, uh, Ill health. And it's a reminder that such a larger than life figure in the end is just a human body. We're going to go to Encino now, where Serene Branson is standing by outside the Jackson family home. Serene, uh, what do you have for us? Well, Rick and Pat, we have been outside the Jackson family home here all afternoon in Encino, and we believe that just within the past five minutes that Michael's sister, Janet, may have returned back to the Jackson mansion here. Uh, and just about 10 minutes before that, we saw a uh, caravan of cars. I think we have some tape of that uh, to show you if we can roll that right now. Uh, we saw five cars pull up to the house. They sped in very quickly, and it seemed as if LAPD was prepared for this. There's about eight officers here in front of the house and they had the gates open all of a sudden we saw a Maserati two Mercedes and two very large SUVs zoom in and uh, neighbors here are telling us that they believe that one of the uh, cars that one of the women in one of those cars was Michael's mother Catherine so it appears at this point in time that some of the family members the Jackson family members may be returning to the home here in Encino
We have David Goldstein now, and apparently some of the family members are approaching, possibly the children. He's in place. Hey, David. Yeah, uh, there's uh, two SUVs here and a uh, Mercedes pulling up. Uh, don't know who's in the car. We had heard rumors that uh, Michael Jackson's children, one or more, may be coming back to the house. But three SUVs coming up uh, to the house right now and uh, don't obviously know who's inside. There's one Nevada license plate, the second one Nevada license plate, and obviously a lot of commotion out here, and this Mercedes coming through, and a uh, black Mercedes SUV pulling through. Is the, we can't tell really uh, who that driver was, uh, but the three cars pulling inside uh, the compound at Michael Jackson's house, um, and here in Holmby Hills, they were stopped at the street at the checkpoint. A lot of photographers, reporters ran up there to try to get a look inside. Uh, once they made it through the checkpoint, they came down uh, uh, Carrollwood Drive here uh, to Michael Jackson's uh, uh, house, the house he was renting, uh, pulled inside, went inside the gates, and those big doors closed up. So uh, that's the situation here live in Holmby Hills. Again, just to update, uh, it's been about two hours that uh, police have been inside looking around this house, trying to uh, find anything they can that could uh, give them uh, some kind of uh, inkling of uh, why Michael Jackson at the age of 50 dropped dead earlier this afternoon. Police are still inside now, two hours and counting, and uh, we'll be outside here all night long. Back to you guys in the studio. Hey, David, if, uh, if it is true that the kids are coming back to the Holmby Hills home, I, and, and I'm sure, I'm guessing Michael had nannies or some sort of help, I mean, who would watch the kids? Have you heard anything out there at all uh, that uh, could it be, in this case, Michael's mother or their grandmother, Catherine, who might uh, show up at the house to help out? Oh, no, I can't. I don't, uh, Dad, I don't know anything about the family and so forth. Um, you're going to have to go to the family representatives for what that. What is the mood inside there right now? What yeah, you well, it's just, it's just an investigation like we would any other department investigation. There's no difference. It's, we're just following department policy and procedures. Can you tell us what those procedures are, what you'd be looking for here uh, in a general sense? Just what we would in any investigation, any death investigation, when uh, it's somebody passes in uh, youthful age like we would anybody. Uh, we're just looking for any evidence of foul play or, or anything like that. And, and uh, like the lieutenant mentioned, the coroner will, will take it over just like any other, any other case. I, I was told earlier that was possibly Catherine, his mother, that was in the back of that SUV. Can you confirm that? No, I cannot. Yeah, there's, have you been contacted by their family? No, I have, no we have not. Can you no. tell us the scene inside uh, of, of what it looked like in the house? No, I, I didn't even go in the home. I have not gone in the home. Sir, what's your name? Uh, Captain Ruben De La Torre. The SUVs that just came in, uh, the, was, was Jermaine Jackson inside one of them? He just made a statement over at the hospital? No, no family member. Uh, we have not been contacted with family members here. That's all I can tell you.
LAPD officers closed the street as detectives from the Elite Robbery Homicide Bureau conducted a death investigation, which police say is routine. A convoy of SUVs also entered the gates, but it was impossible to tell whether it contained family members or part of the singer's staff. Back up. Back, Back up. up. Jeez. Hi, Latoya. Was that Latoya? Unknown tonight is where Michael Jackson's family has settled for the night. They may be here in Holmby Hills, but if so, nobody is sane. Also unknown is who will take over the guardianship of Michael Jackson's three children. Live in Holmby Hills, Gene Gleason, ABC7 Eyewitness News.